First John chapter five. First John chapter five. I'm teaching on a simple message, but yet an important message. And I'm teaching this because of God's desire and my desire for you to always receive from him. And I learned a long time ago that even if you call yourself praying, everybody needs to learn how to pray effectively and correctly. Amen? Amen. I like what it says in, in um, James chapter 5. He says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In other words, it's got to be effective, fervent, or heartfelt prayer of a righteous man. So if you're righteous before God, and you're living right, doing right, and you're praying correctly, your prayer should have impact on your life. Amen? Well, I found out there was an area that people um, lacked when it came to prayer. So I wanted to give you some some things to help you not lack that particular area, and that's simply called confidence. Everybody is not confident in God. Everybody should be very, very confident in God. Everybody should know that they know that what God says, he means it. God is not a man that he should lie to the point that when you go to him, you know you're going to get your prayer answered. You should know that, okay? Well, the only way you can know it is to know the word. See what the word says? Believe the word. If God said it, that settles it. That's the end of it. Amen? So you've got to know that. But now, now watch this. I said, let me say it this way. You have to develop confidence in God, confidence in prayer. So that when you pray, you know you're going to get your prayers answered. Well, God promises that your prayers will be answered. I've gone through a, a bunch of scripture. I'm going to go through some more today. And the whole purpose of God telling you in his word that your prayers will be answered is for you to develop confidence in him. I mean, how much more clear can God be when he says in uh, Mark and in Luke, he says, ask, what's the rest of it? it and what? It ask and you shall receive. Ask and what? Ask and you shall what? Receive. Shall means it's going to happen. Ask and ye shall receive. And then he kicks it up a notch. He says, everyone that asketh, what happens? But see, the challenge has been that people have been asking and they haven't been receiving. So because they haven't been receiving, their confidence in God drops down. But see, God is not the problem. You're the problem. Maybe you haven't been asking right. Maybe you haven't been asking correctly. Maybe you haven't been doing what the Bible says for you to do so you can receive. Would you agree? Okay. Now, 1 John chapter 5. Verse 14, again, every scripture that I'm giving you is to help develop that confidence in you of the promise of God. Verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him. Now, God says you're supposed to have confidence in him, okay? That if we ask what? Anything. Ask what? Anything. Now, see, I like the anything because people say, well, you can't ask God for that. What did he say? So anything includes what? Anything includes everything, doesn't it? But it includes whatever you want, need, or desire. Would you agree? It includes your needs. It includes your wants. It includes your desires. But it says, if we ask anything according to his what? Will or according to his word. So that's really one of the qualifiers. You have to ask based on the word. And a lot of people have an ask based on the word. In other words, what are the parameters in the word for my asking? What do I have to do to ask correctly? Simple, you have to ask and at the same time believe you receive. Can okay, I say that again? You have to ask and at the same time, everybody say believe. believe. Say it again. Believe, believe what? I receive. Believe that you receive the answer when? When, pray. when you pray. You have, if you don't receive it when you pray, then you won't get it in the future. Now, the reason I'm saying this, and I'm, I'm being so specific, is because there are little, t 
tiny things about prayer that people won't do and they haven't figured out why they're not getting an answer. He says, when you pray, believe you receive and ye shall have. But the key is in your believing. We're talking about principles of faith. We're talking about spiritual principles. Okay? It's not just asking, talking to God. No, you have to ask him based on his word. But the key is you have to believe that you receive your answer at the time you pray. Okay? I want three people to raise your hand. Just three people. There's one, two, three. Okay. Give me something you want. Money. He's my kind of man. What's something you want? Car. Car. Truck. Okay. Car, truck. So when you pray, I don't care what kind of car you want, you better be specific because you can't ask God for a car. You can't. No, I'm serious. You ask him for a car, how many, how many models of cars are there? Quite a few. So God's going to look at what kind of car you want. Or you just expect him just, oh, he knows what I want. No, no, you have to tell him what you want. Okay? What kind of truck you want? Whatever. But you, you, you have to know the make, the model, the year, the color, everything, right? And you have to know how much money you want from God, okay? So what, what we're talking about is being specific in prayer. It's not, we just don't say, oh, Lord, bless me. What do you mean, bless you? Bless you How? He blessed you by letting you wake up this morning. So, and plus, that's, that's an, a prayer of unbelief. Because you're already blessed. The scripture says, he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ. So you don't have to say, bless me, because you're already blessed. Like when people say, bless you, I say, you don't have to bless me, I'm already blessed. See, that, those are spiritual things that people say, oh, bless you. No, God already blessed me. I don't need your blessing. His blessing is better than your blessing. You better get some blessing for yourself. Because I'm already blessed. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. He has blessed you with all spiritual blessings. So you're already blessed. But now we're starting to talk about specific things that you want, need, and desire. And when you go to God in prayer, you must be specific. Don't go to God with a general prayer. God, I want a house. I want a job. What kind of house? What kind of job? If you don't tell him one, what kind of job, someone's going to knock on your door. I have a job for you. Okay? And we're going to pay you. How much you want to get paid? Well, I want to get paid $15 an hour. No problem. We're going to pay you $15 an hour. Be there at, at 9 o'clock Monday morning, and we're going to give you a job paying $15 an hour. You said, what am I going to be doing? Just show up. So you weren't specific to ask God, so you don't know what you're going to get. So you get there, and your job for $15 an hour will be for eight, nine hours a day to clean out porta potties. I think that's a rough job if you ask me. Huh? That may not be the job that you were looking for. Can I get an amen? amen? Well, then you have to tell him what you want. So you can get what you want, not just what somebody gives you. You still with me? Okay. So when you ask, it says, um, according to his will or according to his word, what happens? He hears us. So you know when you ask, according to his word, what happens? He hears you. And if we know that, we, that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know. Everybody say, we know. We know. That what? We that we what? Have. What is have? Have, have is present tense. So that means when you ask according to his will, you know you have it when? Now. now. Everybody say when? Now. Now, the petitions that we desired of him. Now, that is a critical principle. That is one of the, really one of the reasons why people don't receive from God because they don't know that they receive it at the time they pray. So if you ask God for a car, then you get your car when you pray. If you ask God for a truck, you get your truck when you pray. If you ask God for a certain amount of money, you get that certain amount of money when you pray. Yes. Now, if you don't get it by faith when you pray, you will not get it by manifestation in the future. 
we're talking about a principle of faith. Faith is what moves the hand of God. So how do you continue your faith walk day by day? Day by day you say, Father, I thank you. I believe I have my money. Father, I thank you. I believe I have my car. Father, I thank you. I believe I have my truck. Father, I thank you. I believe I have my job. Father, I thank you. I believe I have my house. Father, I thank you. I believe I have my husband. Father, I thank you. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Because that's what you have to do. And you keep saying that, no matter what it is. And you can't, Jesus, look at his neighbor and say, you can't. Be moved, be moved by what you see. Because what will happen when you begin to plant a seed of faith in your own life, the Bible says, Satan cometh how soon? Immediately to do what? To take away that seed. Now, how does he do it? He'll paint a picture in your life, you can't get the car. He'll paint a picture you can't get the money. He'll paint a picture that you can't get the truck. And God says, don't be moved by what you... Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4. See, these are, these are prayer nuggets. They're just coming out. Not, they're not in the lesson today, but you showed up, so God wanted you to get this. Okay? You have 2 Corinthians chapter 4? Okay. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says we walk by what? Faith. 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 And not by? Faith. So we live our lives by the, by the confessions of our faith, by what we're saying, and not by what? Sight. You can't be moved by what you see. Look at verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. It says, while we look not at the things which are what? Same. And the reason you can't look at the things which are seen, because the things which are seen may not line up with what you're saying. Okay? But at the things which are not seen. The things which are not seen are the things that you believe in God for. You can only see them with the eye of your faith and the spirit. For or because the things which are seen are what? Temporal, Temporal or temporary or subject to change. So an answer, a no answer is subject to change. I remember a situation, a young lady came uh, to me uh, one day, Bible study. She said, Pastor, I want a job. I said, where do you want a job? She said, I want a job at this particular place, and I want to make this amount of money. I said, okay, I'll get in agreement with you. We prayed, prayed about her getting a job at that particular place and that amount of money. About three months later, she came to me and said, Pastor, they hired somebody else. Now, what does that scripture say? Don't be moved by what? What you see, what you hear, what you feel. It's talking about the sense realm. Because your sense realm will get you off of your faith. Don't be moved by that. I said, so when she came to me, Bible study, she said, Pastor, they hired somebody else. I said, so? I said, is that your job? She said, but I said, is that your job? I said, you don't change just because you see something. What you say changes the circumstances. So you have a choice. You can be concerned that they hired somebody else, or you can stand on the word for your job. She said, well, I don't understand. I said, you don't have to understand. Just believe it and do it. So guess what? She said, okay. I said, what's your confession? Father, I believe I have my job making X number of money. Fine, that's it. End of story. Don't come to me no more until you get the job. So she stood on the word, and two months later, she came back. Bible said, Pastor, I got the job. I got the They fired the other lady. Because <laughs> you see, what you say will change your circumstances. And the other lady got hired because she was qualified. The sister that was believing God, she wasn't even qualified. But she was a child of God. That made her qualified. <laughs> God will move mountains when you stand on his word. And that's what happened. She's still working there to this day. Amen. Why? Because she stood on his word. She wasn't moved. She needed some help. She had to learn the principle. Hopefully you'll learn the principle. Because when you pray about something, guess what? It's yours. I said it's yours. 
you can go down and say, I want this car. Find out a car, go down and, and apply for the car, and they say, no, you can't have it. Your credit's raggedy. You have a choice. You can say, oh, I can't get my car. I get my credit's raggedy. Or you can walk out and say, Father, Father, that's my car. You know my credit's raggedy, and I know my credit's raggedy. <laughs> but we're going to do something to fix it. But the bottom line, that's my car. In other words, you stand on his word and just begin to do what you're supposed to do, and guess what? You'll get your car. They'll call you back and say, come get your car. But the bottom line, you can't be moved by what you see. Are you still with me? Now, when you learn to do these things, you'll develop confidence in God. Because your prayers will always get answered. That's, that's why I like, turn, turn to 2 uh, Corinthians. I know. <laughs> you already, I said, yeah, you already turned back a couple of scriptures. Did I say second? Yeah. Uh, well, I wanted one. I wanted first Corinthians. That's why. You wasn't already there. <laughs> first Corinthians. First Corinthians. Did I say 1 Corinthians? I think I meant 2 Corinthians. Though. <laughs> Which one was I looking for? I'll tell you in a minute, but let me find it first. As soon as I tell you, you'll tell me where it is, but I thought I knew where it was. My goodness. It's probably in 2 Corinthians. Yes, it is, right where I said it was. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. See, you have to get this down in your spirit. What is, what's contained in the Bible? In reference to your covenant, what's contained in the Bible? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. A promise is a divine insurance or assurance of good. God is, God's word is behind that. Okay? You have first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Look at verse 20. Read, read verse 20 out loud to yea. Stop. Yea means yes. Read it again. Say yes instead of yea. One more time. Are what? So all the promises of God are what? So that means everything that you ask God for based on his word, what's the answer? Yes. The answer is yes before you even ask. That's what you got to get the revelation of. So you're wondering if God, no, no, the promise is yes already. You haven't even asked God for, and the promise is what? Yes. Huh? Yes. Let me see if I can find this scripture. I know it's in the Bible. I thought it was in my notes, but I want to show you something because that's, that's important. Um, Hopefully, the Spirit of God will show me what that scripture is, because I don't know. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Turn to Isaiah chapter 65. Holy Ghost will show you stuff. Isaiah chapter 65. What did I say about the promises? No. What did I say? I said before you asked, didn't I? Huh? I just want to give you a scripture to back that up. I want you to get all messed up. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? I said, are you ready? Okay, turn to Matthew chapter 6 also. Matthew chapter 6. No, this is important. See, I, I'm trying to help you develop confidence in God, and you do it based on what he says. Okay? We're going to look at Matthew 6 first, then we'll look at Isaiah 65. Got Matthew chapter 6? Okay, watch. Matthew chapter 6. It says in verse 31, Matthew chapter 6, 30, verse 31. It says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or wherewithal shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Look at the next statement. For your heavenly Father 
what? Knoweth. Knoweth that ye have need of what? All these things. So God knows what you need. Would you agree? Okay, now watch. Go to Isaiah chapter 65. You can read the whole chapter later, but I want to read this one. This verse. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24. If you have it, say, I have it. Watch. It says, and it shall come to pass that before they call or before they ask, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. What did he say? He said he going to answer before you ask. Did he say that? That's why in the New Testament, you need to realize that all the promises of God are what? Yes. yes. See, he already answered before you ask. He already answered. The answer is yes before you ask. But what you have to learn, you have to learn how to ask according to his will and according to his word. Okay? Now, turn to Mark chapter 11. That's where we left off last week. Mark chapter 11. Now, when you talk about confidence, you have to talk about the other word. Because if you don't talk about the other word, so many people are living in the other word and they don't realize they're living in the other word. That other word dominates their life. And they don't understand. What word are you talking about? Huh? What's the opposite of confidence? Doubt. And that's why people are not praying consistently with regularity because they have so much doubt in their heart. And if you have doubt in your heart, you can't receive from God. Because that's one of the things he says, if you, to doubt God is not to trust him. And he already told you, trust in the Lord with what? All. How much of your heart? All. Trust in the Lord with what? Say the whole thing. Trust the Lord with what? All my heart. With what? All my heart. With what? All my heart. Trust in the Lord with what? All my heart. How much of your heart? All my heart. So you're supposed to trust the Lord with what? All my heart. Okay. You got Mark chapter 11 yet? Yes. Gave you enough time to find it. Okay. Look at verse 22. It says, And Jesus answering said unto them, What? Have, Have faith, faith in who? or have trust in God, or have confidence in God. Jesus told you to have faith, to have trust, to have confidence in God. He gave you a commandment to have confidence in God. Did he not? Yes. Then he goes on, for or because. This is a reason why you have to have confidence in God. For or because. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, who's a whosoever? That's you. You're whosoever. Your name is George whosoever Smith. Okay? Or Nancy whosoever Jones. Whatever. But you're the whosoever. That whosoever shall what? Say. What? Say. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to say something. Unto this mountain be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not what? Down. Shall not what? Down. Shall not what? Down. Shall not what? Down. Where? Here. Hmm. Shall not what? Down. Where? In my heart. I just quoted Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. It said, trust in the Lord with what? So what are you supposed to do with your heart in reference to trust? Trust God where? Huh? In my heart. So where is the trust supposed to be? So if the trust is supposed to be in your heart, then doubt shouldn't be in your heart. Trust and doubt can't live in the same street. They can't live in the same house. Your problem is you got some trust living in your house and some doubt living in your house. Somebody got to leave. Amen. If you want to receive from God, somebody's got to leave that house. Amen. So who are you going to allow to live in your house? Trust or what? See, trust receives from God. Doubt hinders God. Now, I'm not talking about the person sitting next to you. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about your house. Put your hand on the forehead and say, this is my house. This is my house. See, that's your house. 
And see, trust or doubt lives in your house. Because he says it's in your what? Heart. Heart. Okay, watch. It says in the middle of verse 23, and shall not doubt where? I like what he says. And shall not doubt where? Doubt is the thief of God's greater blessings. Doubt steals God's blessings from you. Doubt is satanic, and it steals from you. And you're allowing the thief to live in your house. Because you don't trust God. And you just got a commandment from Jesus to trust him. Are you still here? Yes, okay, watch. And shall not what? Doubt. Shall not what? Doubt. But shall what? Believe. But shall what? Believe. So you can't doubt, but you're supposed to do what? Believe. You're supposed to do what? Believe. So he said, don't doubt, but you're supposed to do what? Believe. He said, don't doubt, but you're supposed to do what? Believe. But you got to figure out what you got to believe. Yeah. Now, that's where the rubber meets the road. Okay? He says, shall not doubt, but shall what? Believe. Now, let me tell you what's happening in most people's lives. What's going on, he says, shall not doubt, but shall believe. But he tells you what to believe. Yeah. But what most people are believing, they're believing the doubt. That's where their belief factor, their belief factor is in the doubt. Oh, he didn't answer my prayer last week. Why should he answer it this week? I prayed for this two months ago, and it hasn't happened yet. I asked for a job. I don't have no job. I've been without a job forever. Yeah, that's why you're without a job, too. You keep saying you're without a job. You don't realize you're talking against your job. Because he says, when you pray, believe you receive, and you what? Shall have. See, you didn't believe, you receive. Remember I told you? You got to believe you receive at the time you pray. If you don't believe you receive at the time you pray, friends, it's not going to happen. And the reason people don't receive, believe they receive at the time they pray is because they're looking in the natural. And we're not talking about natural. We're talking about the supernatural. Yeah. We're talking about a circumstance whereby you use God's word to change your natural circumstances. I don't care how bad they are, you can change them. In fact, let me make it real plain, you are the only one that can.